Hey everyone, Mr. Sujano here. In this video, we're going over the best emulator apps on Android. Let's get started. All right, to kick things off, it's been a while since I've done a video on the best emulator apps on Android. The last time I posted one was back in 2020. So it has been a while here and some things have changed. It's more or less time for an update. Now in this video, I do have a list of both free and paid emulators. And very fortunately here, the trend seems to be going towards free, where previously it was going towards paid. So that is a really good thing, especially if you wanna save a few bucks. So first up here, if you're looking for a one-stop shop, an emulator that tries to do it all, well, RetroArch might be up your alley. This app is not for the faint of heart, but you can emulate a bunch of different systems with it. On the Google Play Store, there are two different versions, RetroArch and RetroArch Plus. And I recommend neither of these from the Google Play Store. The absolute best and most up-to-date version of RetroArch is available right on RetroArch's website. It's 100% free. You can pick up the APK right on the downloads page here and it's the latest and greatest version. And if you're a little bit curious about RetroArch and want help setting it up, well, I do have a tutorial video and I will leave it in the description below. This one was published also back in 2020, so I'll probably need to update it, but it still holds true today. However, if you try RetroArch out and it's still a little bit too complicated or if you don't like it at all, well, there's always Lemuroid. And Lemuroid is the easier version here I would say it's more or less an easy version of RetroArch. It's very straightforward, very simple to use, and I've also got a tutorial video on it, and I'll leave it in the description below. Now, one of my favorite parts about Lemuroid and RetroArch is the fact that they're both updated quite frequently. They're also both free, and they're also both incredibly good at emulating older systems, niche systems, and arcade games. Both Lemuroid and RetroArch do an exceptional job here with MAME and Final Burn Neo. Now moving on to standalone emulators, and a lot of people prefer standalone emulators here. They're not jacks of all trades. They do one thing and they do one thing very well. And we'll start out here with the regular Game Boy and Game Boy Color. Pizza Boy GBC Basic is the one I recommend here. It is free. This app is updated quite frequently, at least at the time of filming. It was updated a little over a month ago. And this app doesn't contain all of the features that the paid version does, but if you're just playing games on single player here and just want them to play, well, Pizza Boy GBC Basic might be the way to go. Now, if you are into customizations, cheats, and a few more features here, you might want to check out Pizza Boy GBC Pro. The 589 is in Canadian dollars. In the States, I believe it's 499. If you're a massive fan of the Game Boy Color, this might be something to check out. Moving on now to Game Boy Advance, and we're still talking about pizza. So if you're looking for a free option for Game Boy Advance, Pizza Boy GBA Basic is the way to go here. And this one is updated quite frequently as well. At the time of filming here, it was updated less than a month ago. Now, just like Pizza Boy GBC Basic, Pizza Boy GBA Basic is also stripped down of a few different features when compared to the paid version. However, if you're just looking for a single player experience, this is something to take a look at. If you like customizing things though, if you're looking for a paid option here, Pizza Boy GBA Pro is the way to go. Just like the Game Boy Color version of this emulator, the Game Boy Advance here is priced at $4.99. If you pick up all of the paid versions, they do start adding up in value. Anyways, here the Pro version gives you a bunch of customization options, some cheats options, as well as stuff like rewind and box art. The paid version here is also updated quite frequently. The last time it was updated was April 15th, which at the time of filming here wasn't too long ago. Hopefully this trend continues. And something to mention here too, with Pizza Boy GBC and Pizza Boy GBA, both the free and the paid versions do not contain any ads whatsoever. And just a pro tip here, if you're looking for the best emulation possible for the GBA, do check out Lemuroid or RetroArch, specifically the MGBA Core. It is very, very good. Next up here, we're talking about Nintendo DS emulator. If you're looking for a really good Nintendo DS emulator, Drastic DS has you covered. In the States, it'll run you five bucks for this emulator, and there is something I wanna let you know here. They do plan on making this both open source and free, but we don't have dates and when that's gonna happen. Possibly by the time you're watching this video, this is now free, but at the time of filming here, it will cost you about five bucks USD, but it is well worth it. However, if you're dead set on a free version, check out something like RetroArch or possibly even Melon DS. 
Melon DS here is absolutely free. There are no ads. It's not as good as Drastic, but this one has been improving. Next up here, we're talking about Nintendo 3DS emulation, and Citra here is the way to go. However, there is a bit of a caveat. Citra hasn't been updated in quite some time. If we take a look here, it was updated over a year ago at this point. There is a version you can get that is a fork of Citra that's not on the Play Store. This fork of Citra is called Citra MMJ, where MMJ stands for Subscribe to Mr. Sujano. This one is available on GitHub. I'll leave a link to it in the description below. It's geared towards performance as opposed to emulation accuracy. So if you've got an older device, if you've got a lower power device, Citra MMJ might be the way to go. There is also Citra Enhanced if you wanted to try out a different fork altogether. But either way here, I do recommend checking out Citra on the Play Store first and seeing if that works for you. If it doesn't, then check out the other forks. Moving on now to the Neo Geo Pocket. And if you're looking for Neo Geo Pocket emulation, I do recommend checking out something like RetroArch. But if you're looking for a paid version, a more tailored experience, well, you can check out ngp.emu by Robert Broglia. This one runs about $5 USD. Next up here, we've got PSP emulation, and I highly recommend PPSSPP, both the standalone version and the versions that are available in Lemuroid and Retroarch. PPSSPP is absolutely amazing, and it is free. However, if you do want to pay for PPSSPP, you absolutely can. There's PPSSPP Gold. This version gets you no additional features whatsoever. It's more or less just a flex. And I did pick this up simply to support the developer because it's such an amazing emulator. Next up, we're talking about the Game Gear and also Master System. If you're looking for a free version, Lemuroid and Retroarch are definitely the way to go. But if you're looking for a standalone paid option, well, Master Gear is there for you. This is a pretty good little emulator. It is updated quite frequently. The last time it was updated was back in February of this year. Now for PC Engine games, Atari 2600 and Sega Mega Drive, there are three standalone apps here from Robert Broglia. These ones are all paid, but they are pretty good. I do recommend checking out Retroarch and Lemuroid first and seeing if that works for you. Now moving on to the NES, and I do highly recommend using Lemuroid or Retroarch. They have some very accurate and very good cores. However, if you're looking for a standalone app here, NES.emu has you covered as well as Nostalgia.nes. Nostalgia.nes is free, but it does contain ads, and it hasn't been updated in quite some time. NES.emu here is paid, there are no ads, and it is updated quite frequently, just a couple of months ago. For Super Nintendo, I've got three different options for you, and they are all free. Check out Lemuroid and Retroarch for some extremely accurate and pretty darn good cores. There are a few of them on Retroarch, you can try a few of them out and see which one works for you. Or if you want the standalone version here, SNES 9X EX Plus is 100% free, and this one is pretty good. It's not the most accurate emulator out there, but it works with a bunch of different devices. It works well, and you should be able to emulate almost every single SNES game without any issue. And as a bonus here, SNES 9X gets updated quite frequently, just a couple of months ago. Moving up a generation now, and we're talking about the Nintendo 64. If you're looking for good N64 emulation, M64 Plus FZ has you covered. It's free, but it does contain ads. If you are looking for an ad-free experience, you can check out Lemuroid or Retroarch, or check out M64 Plus FZ. This one contains no ads, it has net play and cloud backups. Now for the rival of the N64, the PS1, and the emulator here that I highly recommend is Duck Station. Duck Station is amazing, and it's still alive and well. It's also free. In my opinion, Duck Station is the way to go. I would use this over Lemuroid or Retroarch in a heartbeat. It is just that good. Now for Sega Saturn, we've got Yabushinshiro 2, the free version which contains ads, and also the paid version which does not contain ads. Both the free and the paid version here, I would say are still at fairly early stages of development. You might run into issues on this one, it's not necessarily going to be the smoothest experience. On a positive note here, both the free and the paid versions are updated quite frequently and the developers are working hard to make these even better. Moving up a generation here and we're talking about the Sega Dreamcast, I've got two different options, well three different options for you. If you're looking for a free version that works pretty darn well, check out Lemuroid or possibly even Retroarch. 
If you're looking for a paid version that's very easy to use, has a great user interface, and is very smooth, well, Redream might be up your alley. Redream is amazing. However, there is one caveat here. I would be lying if I said I wasn't concerned at the rate of updates this app is getting, because the last time it was updated was back in 2021. However, I will say here, if you're cool with a few less features, like no upscaling and a few less save state slots, the free version of Redream might be for you. You can try it absolutely free here. The paid version is six bucks. Next up, we're talking about the Nintendo GameCube, and my recommendation here is Dolphin. Dolphin on the Google Play Store. This one is updated quite frequently. The last time it was updated was just a little over a month ago at the time of filming. It works very, very good, but it is focused on emulation accuracy. If you're struggling with Dolphin, considering this is GameCube, there are some options for you here that sacrifice accuracy for performance. Just like the Play Store version of Dolphin, these forks of Dolphin are absolutely free. The first one here is Dolphin MMJR, where MMJ stands for subscribe to Mr. Sujano and the R stands for revamp. This one is geared towards performance. There is also Dolphin MMJR 2, which is also geared towards performance here, also 100% free. And if that wasn't confusing enough, there's also another version of Dolphin MMJR 2. It's also free here. Uh, I'll leave links to all of them in the description below. I've done videos on them in the past. I can leave one of those in the description below too if you want to learn more about them all. Uh, test out any of these forks and see which one works for you. These are all updated incredibly frequently. They all work a little bit different and they perform different on different devices. Start out with MMJR, then try MMJR2 by Bankai Master, and then also try out MMJR2 by Lumens. And a pro tip here, if you're looking for the cutting edge, the latest and greatest version of Dolphin whatsoever, you can pick up a development version right on Dolphin's website. I'll leave a link to that in the description below as well. These versions here might be a little bit better than the Google Play Store, there might be a few issues with them though, they might not be perfect. The Google Play Store is considered the stable version, and these ones here are more or less in final testing. Next up, we're talking about PlayStation 2, and I've got two different options for you. The first one here is Aether SX2. This one came out of nowhere a number of months ago and has completely taken off and completely dominated the PS2 emulation on Android scene. It's a very good app provided you have a very good phone. If you have an outdated phone or a lower end device, you might struggle with this app. And that's because PlayStation 2 emulation is quite taxing on your phone. This app is free. There are no ads on it whatsoever, and it does have the blessing of the PCSX2 team, which is an amazing PS2 emulator on PC. In fact, Aether SX2 shares some DNA with PCSX2. Trying hard to find a downside to Aether SX2, the only thing I can think of right now is the fact that it requires your own BIOS file. It does not come with one, you need to provide your own. Not that that is a big deal. However, if you don't want to provide your own BIOS file, there's the second option here, which is also free, does not contain ads and that is Play. Being perfectly honest though, Play is not near as far as Aether SX2 is in terms of overall emulation, but Play is available on a bunch of different platforms, including iOS, does not require a BIOS file if that is an issue for you, and is updated quite frequently as well. It was updated this month. Moving on now to current gen systems, and we've got Nintendo Switch emulation with Skyline. Skyline is the best Switch emulator on Android. It's not the only one, and we'll get to that in just a second here, uh, but Skyline is amazing. It's not available on the Google Play Store. It is free, and you do need a GitHub account in order to download it. Skyline is still super early on in development. You can't play games on it like Super Mario Odyssey or Breath of the Wild just yet. But if you're looking to play something like Sonic Mania or even Celeste, well, this one should be able to do it for you at a pretty decent frame rate. Now, I know there's going to be people in the comments saying, hey, Egg NS is the best Switch emulator on Android, and I would completely disagree with you on that for a couple of big reasons. Number one, this is more or less just a gimmick to sell a controller. Egg NS won't work unless you've got a GameSir X2. Egg NS is not accurate in terms of Switch emulation. It's incredibly hacked up just to get the games running to say they've got an app to sell you a controller. They have stolen Yuzu Code, which is an open source Switch emulator on PC, 
in order to get this emulator to work. They didn't have Yuzu's permission. And EGNS also requires an always online connection in order to work. It is extremely questionable overall. It's not on the Google Play Store. I don't think it's ever gonna be on the Play Store. And this one is something I would completely avoid. And I just wanted to point it out because there will be people talking about it in the comments. Last up, we're talking about emulation front ends. Now these are not emulators in themselves. They do not contain emulators, they work with emulators. If you have a bunch of ROMs on your device, if you have a bunch of emulators on your device, or if you have one emulator like RetroArch with a bunch of different cores, well, something like Reset Collection here, an emulator front end will help make everything look nice and pretty. It'll organize everything for you. You get nice box arts, descriptions, animations, and it's kind of like a one-stop shop. Reset Collection will cost you money though. I've done a video on it. I'll leave one in the description below. There is a free version of one though that you might like as well. And the free emulator front end is LaunchBox. Now LaunchBox is not 100% free. The free version is capped at using it with 100 games. If you have more than 100 games on your device, you should probably look at picking up the paid version. There are a bunch of different payment tiers here. Fortunately, you can start off free and check it out to see if you like it. I have also done videos on LaunchBox and I'll drop one in the description below. I would argue that emulation front ends aren't completely necessary, they're optional and more or less if you're an enthusiast or have a whole bunch of different games and it's becoming a headache. I mean, they do make things look pretty darn cool. But anyways, that is all I've got for you in this one. Straight to the point, all stuff and no fluff. Let me know your thoughts on the best emulators for Android in the comments below. Do you agree with my choices? Am I wrong somewhere? Did I miss something? Let me know in the comments below. If you like this video, leave a like. If you didn't like this video, leave a like. Hit that subscribe button. Check out my other videos. Don't tempt fate. Save your state.